The next subtopic that we will discuss in this chapter is biogeochemical cycle. So first, let us define what is biogeochemical cycle. So based on the name, we have bio, geo, and chemical. There are three components in the name. Chemicals refer to nutrients or chemical which flow between the biotic and the abiotic components of the ecosystem. So we have the chemical which is the nutrient and then we have the bio, the biotic component and lastly the geo which is the abiotic component of the ecosystem. So that's why kita panggil cycle ini adalah biogeochemical cycle. Sebab nutrient itu akan flow di antara setiap komponen of the ecosystem. In general, there are two components of biogeochemical cycle. The first one is reservoir pool and then there are also cycling pools. What is reservoir pool? Reservoir maksudnya simpanan in large amount. So reservoir pool refers to the nutrients being stored in large quantity, mainly in abiotic component as well as some also store in biotic component of the ecosystem. Reserve reservoir. So simpanan dalam quantity yang banyak dan kebanyakan simpanan tersebut dalam bentuk abiotic component of ecosystem. Tapi setengah nutrient juga, reservoir dia ada juga dalam bentuk biotic component. Next is cycling pool. So cycling pool pula, the nutrients is being stored in smaller amount and involve rapid exchange between the biotic and abiotic component. Maksudnya nutrient dalam cycling pool ini, Bukan sahaja kuantiti yang ada tu sikit tetapi akan ada active exchange. Maksudnya sentiasa berlaku pertukaran nutrien di dalam cycling pool in between biotic and abiotic component. For example, nutrien in the reservoir pool boleh masuk ke dalam cycling pool mengikut proses yang kita panggil sebagai fixation. So that is the main process that remove nutrients from reservoir pool to enter the cycling pool. Sebab tadi nama dia adalah cycle. So kalau cycle mesti ada pertukaran between the reservoir pool and then the cycling pool. Next, nutrient in the cycling pool can be returned back to the reservoir pool by many different types of processes. For example, other decomposition, cellular respiration, combustion, erosion. So, ada banyak process that will return the nutrient yang sudah ada dalam cycling pool tadi and then back into the reserve which is the reservoir pool. There are three types of biogeochemical cycle that you have to be able to explain. So the first one is carbon cycle and then we have nitrogen cycle followed by phosphorus cycle. For all of the cycle, make sure you can identify the reservoir pool and then also the cycling pool as well as the processes by which the nutrient enters or exit the pool. In carbon cycle, the reservoir pool includes Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, so CO2 yang ada dalam udara itu adalah one of the main storage of carbon dalam kita punya ekosistem. Lepas tu ada juga carbon dalam bentuk fossil fuel yang ada di dalam tanah. Lepas tu ada juga carbon yang dissolve di dalam ocean. So kenapa ada carbon yang dissolve dalam ocean? Semuanya because of the cellular respiration dan juga decomposition yang berlaku di dalam ocean. So aquatic organism, plant ke, animal ke, algae ke yang buat cellular respiration akan produce CO2 dan CO2 tu akan dissolve di dalam ocean. Sama juga apabila plant, animal, algae tu mati, dia akan decompose by decomposer and the decomposer pun akan release CO2 sebagai dia punya waste product. And all of that CO2 will remain dissolved in the ocean. Next, carbon yang berada di dalam shell of molluska. So shell itu adalah cengkerang kepada a groups of organism yang kita panggil sebagai molluska seperti siput, seperti squid, sotong ataupun kerang, oysters. 
So apabila organisme tersebut mati, dia punya shell yang mengandungi kalsium akan mendap ke dasar ocean untuk jadi reaktif sediment. So lama kelamaan, shell tersebut akan become the limestone which is another reservoir pool of the carbon cycle. Next is cycling pool. So in carbon cycle, cycling pool mainly involve living organism. For example, plants, algae and bacteria. So these are producers. Producers yang akan remove carbon daripada reservoir pool in the atmosphere and then transfer the carbon into biotic component of the ecosystem. It could process photosynthesis. Next, we have decomposer, for example, bacteria and fungi that can undergo decomposition to remove carbon in the dead organic matter and transfer the carbon from the dead organic matter into the soil in the form of mineral carbon. So, mineral carbon ni, later on will be reabsorbed by the plant and then recycled. Next, carbon in the cycling pool boleh return back to the reservoir pool through a process known as respiration. Respiration can occur both in animal as well as in plant. Not to forget, the process of decomposition also removes CO2 as a waste product. So during decomposition pun, the decayed organism yang dah decompose tadi pun akan return the CO2 to the atmosphere. Next is nitrogen cycle. So sama juga awak kena boleh identify di mana reservoir pool and cycling pool for nitrogen cycle. For nitrogen cycle, the reservoir pool ada satu sahaja iaitu in the form of gas, nitrogen gas can be found in the atmosphere. So dalam atmosphere ni ada banyak nitrogen gas. Next for the cycling pool, so cycling pool is the one that stored nitrogen in the form of ammonia or aluminium ion in the soil. Ada juga nitrogen that is being stored in the protein of animals and plants within the ecosystem. So macam mana nitrogen yang tadi dalam reservoir pool dalam bentuk gas boleh enter the soil tapi dalam bentuk lain iaitu ammonia or aluminium ion. So that's why we have three processes of fixation. The first nitrogen fixation is atmospheric fixation by lightning. So lightning adalah komponen yang penting yang akan fix nitrogen N2 and then tukarkan dia ke dalam bentuk ammonia or ammonium ion. So itu first. Second is biological fixation. So biological fixation is by bacteria. So these are the two example of biological fixation bacteria iaitu ada azotobacter iaitu free living bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria, ada juga rhizobium sp. So ini adalah symbiotic bacteria. So ada dua groups of bacteria yang boleh buat biological fixation untuk remove nitrogen from the atmosphere and then tukarkan ke bentuk yang boleh digunakan di dalam sol yang kita panggil sebagai ammonia ataupun ammonium. So untuk industrial fixation of nitrogen, proses yang biasa digunakan adalah Haber Bosch process. For the nitrogen inside animal and plant, so nitrogen tersebut mainly located in the protein. So ingat protein is made up of many amino acid. We know that in amino acid there are two main functional group, amino group and carboxyl group. So the amino group yang akan contain nitrogen. After fixation, the ammonium ion or the ammonia can be converted into nitrate. So nitrate ni boleh digunakan oleh living organism, for example oleh plant. So plant will absorb. Absorb kat sini merujuk kepada assimilation. So when the plant assimilate ataupun absorb nitrate, the plant can convert the nitrate in their protein. Next, the protein in the plant is assimilated into the animals when the animal eat the plant. Lastly, 
the nitrogen in the cycling pool can be returned back to the atmosphere through a process known as denitrification so d means to remove remove upper remove nitrate so denitrification is to remove the nitrate in the soil back to the atmosphere so this process is done by a group of bacteria known as denitrification bacteria the third cycle is phosphorus cycle so for phosphorus cycle the reservoir pool includes rocks soil oceans and sediment so rocks ni batu-batuan yang terbentuk daripada proses known as geological uplift Maksudnya, underwater phosphate yang berada di dalam sediment iaitu another component of the reservoir pool So, sediment lama kelamaan akan mengalami a process known as geological uplift to form the rocks And then, the phosphate in the rocks can be transferred to the soil as well as ocean melalui proses weathering So weathering tu for example macam hujan asid yang akan dissolve the phosphate from the rocks and then the dissolved phosphate run off to the soil ataupun run off to the ocean. So dapatlah phosphate yang berada di dalam soil dan juga di dalam ocean. Phosphate in the soil also came from decomposition ataupun excretion excretion of the waste material daripada plant dan animal ataupun decomposition daripada dead organism dead plant ataupun dead animal so ini pun akan also contribute to the underground phosphate reserve next for the ocean phosphate in the ocean came from leaching leaching tu maksudnya nutrien yang berada dalam soil tadi dia akan meresap ke dalam underground water and then the water akan run off pergi ke ocean so itu adalah leaching sediment pula adalah phosphate-phosphate yang berada dalam ocean tadi dia akan sink, mendap and then to form the sediment layer in the ocean So these are the reservoir pool of the phosphorus cycle. Next is the cycling pool. So for phosphorus cycle, the cycling pool can be found in the plants and animals in the form of ATP ataupun nucleic acid, DNA ataupun RNA. Ada juga phosphate inside our bones and our teeth. So in animals and plants, itu adalah cycling pool of the phosphorus cycle. So macam mana the phosphate from the environment end up in plants and animals through a process such as absorption from the soil kalau plant and then consumption by animals lah. So that's it for 2.5.